So um, this morning, I, I just want to to make sure that you all know that you're welcome. You're part of this great, big, wonderful family. And we've been here for a long time on this little corner, and God has taken, through us, has taken us through a lot of things. But, you know, I want to talk about the Lord this morning. And I won't take long. I promise, I promise, I promise. I'll make it quick. Faith is now. Faith is always right now. God, faith is always, it's the currency of heaven. Whatever it is that you're needing, whatever it is that you need, if you need finances, if you need health, if you need help with your children, then your faith is how you're going to get it. It takes faith to please the Lord. That's what he says. He tells us that. Um, God created, God created the heavens. He created the earth. He created all things with his faith because all he did was speak. He spoke. We have a wonderful triune Godhead. We have the Holy Spirit, the, the wonderful one that God calls on many times, and, and he creates. When In Genesis 1-1, the Lord spoke. The, the Holy Spirit was hovering. If you'll read that, if you'll read Genesis, the Holy Spirit was hovering. But nothing was happening until the Lord spoke. When the Lord spoke, he spoke with faith, believing which we are made in his image. He later on tells us in Genesis 1, 26, 27, he said, let us, let us, more than one, there's three of them, let us make man in our image. And they did, they did, they made us in their image and they gave us dominion over the works of their hands. Um, in Hebrews 11, 1, it tells us that faith perceives as real faith, as real fact, I'm sorry, as real fact, when we believe with God's kind of faith, and he gave us, he gave us that faith, it tells us in Mark 11, 22, 23, he says, have the faith of God, now you don't have to take it, you don't have to believe, you don't have to stand on God's word, and I'll tell you something, Satan is working overtime to keep you from believing his word. That's the only way he can stop you. He hates you. You are a family member. We are from the royal family. Our Father, our precious Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we belong to that family. Jesus took on an earthly body and left heaven and came down here and used that body as a sacrifice. Can you imagine him leaving heaven and coming down to this earth knowing full well what was going to happen to him? He made that body. He said, you have made a body for me. He made him an earthly body to come into this, this earthly realm to be made a substitute for us. For when Adam gave up his dominion to Satan, then Satan had dominion over this earth. And the only way that we could be saved was through a sacrifice. The Lord taught sacrifice all the way from Genesis right on through. He taught the people about sacrifice, about sacrificing the animals to, for them to know what it was going to be like for when Jesus sacrificed. When Jesus was sacrificed on the cross, a new covenant came in. Jesus said, it's finished. It's finished. It was finished. The Old Testament was finished. The, the veil on the Holy of Holies was ripped in two. That thing was four inches thick. You Bible readers know that. There is no way any earthly man could have ripped that thing. But it ripped from the top down. And it left the Holy of Holies open. Let me tell you something, people. The day that they were crucifying him and hung him on the cross... He hung up there, beaten worse than any man, beyond recognition of hardly being a man.
but he gave his life. He said it's finished. The Old Testament was finished. It was wrapped up. The new covenant through his blood, the new covenant between the Lord and Jesus Christ was born. The church was born through the blood and the water that gushed out of his side. The new church was born. The new creation was born on that day. Many people, it tells you, if you go back and you read it, many people saw their, their lost ones, the ones that had already died and gone on. Many of them walked the streets. Re, go back and read it. Many of them were resurrected at that time. People, I was not going to say any of this stuff. <laughs> it's just rolling. But I just want you to remember who you are, what you are. God's powerful, creative words when we, when we believe his words, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. When we stand on that word, you don't have to. You don't have to stand on that word. You can say, I don't believe a thing you're saying. Well, that's okay. That's all right. Nobody's making you believe it. But read your Bible. It's there. When you stand on the word of God, there is enough power in that word to bring to pass whatever God has spoken about it. God's powerful, creative words he spoke into our hearts. And whenever you speak those and you mix them with the faith that he gave to us, that's what he wants us to do. He made us spiritual beings like he is. We are spirit, body, and soul. But when the angels hear us speaking God's words, then they obey the voice of the word. God's no longer, he, God is, is spirit. He speaks through us. But when he hears us speaking God's words, then according to Psalms 103, 20, then, he, then they go to work to bring it to pass. People, we have got everything we need. We have got the authority given to us by God Almighty. We've got his word. We've got his, his power in that word. We have his name. We have the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit, the one that created when God said, let there be light. The Holy Spirit was the one that was moving, and he created the light. Then Jesus was there because Jesus is the word. God spoke the word. Now, at this time, whenever we speak the word, the angels listen, and they go to work to bring it to pass. There is nothing on the face of this earth. When Jesus was here on, on the earth in, in body form, in physical form, he, the, the, Satan tried to tempt him many times, and he told him, he said, it is written. Each time, he told him, it is written. People, we have the right and the authority to say, it is written, and Satan has to flee. There is nothing on the face of this earth that is more powerful than the word of the Lord. So just know that that is yours, that's your, uh, that's your right to use. I'm going to ask you all to just stand. No disease on, no disease on this earth or anything else can come against that word. Heavenly Father, we give you praise this morning, Father God. We worship you, Father. We worship you. We thank you. We give you praise. Oh, Heavenly Father, we praise you. We praise you for our precious, holy, holy Jesus, Father God. Oh, Father God, we praise you for Jesus. We praise you for what he did on the cross. We praise you that it is now ours because of what you have done. Father God, we praise you for the Holy Spirit that dwells in each one of us, Father God, when we give, when, when we give our lives to you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you will have your way this morning in this service, Father God. I just pray that each soul, each person here, Father God, will be touched, will be touched by you. Oh, just, just, oh, just pour out your spirit. Yes, just flood this place. Just flood this place. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your love. 
Oh, we give you praise. People just praise him from the bottom of your heart. Thank you, Lord. Amen. when you could read from scripture is it not psalm 107 give thanks to the lord for he is good his love endures forever let the redeemed of the lord tell their story those he redeemed from the hand of the foe those that he gathered from the lands from the east to the west and the north and the south some sat in darkness and utter darkness prisoners suffering in iron chains then they cried to the lord in their trouble that's what you need to do here this morning. You just got to cry out to the Lord. He saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love, for his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he breaks down the gates of bronze, and he cuts through bars of iron. I don't know. I don't know anybody else that can do that. 
but my Lord Jesus Christ. Let the redeemed say so. Have you been redeemed? Have you been restored? Have you been healed? Let the redeemed say so. Hallelujah. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Sing of His promises
We well, I know that you guys know that I've been gone for a couple weeks. I've been holding my grandbabies for a couple weeks. But I, honestly, I just, I really wanted to uh, say thank you for all the prayers and stuff that was lifted up. You know, sometimes we have a journey and we don't, we don't see the journey. We don't understand it sometimes. But I will tell you this, the one thing that I shared with my kids the morning that I got the call that their, the baby was, was going to be born that day, which was right at about seven weeks early. And I knew that, that was going to be a battle, but I will say this. Sometimes we go through things that are imperfect. The journey may, on our side, look imperfect, but God perfects that. He perfects that. I, I said, you know, you can't trust God totally for part of the journey. Listen, when you took breath, that was the start of your journey. And until you take your last breath, that is a continuance of the journey. It's up here and it's down here, but I will tell you, God's consistent all through it all. And he perfects that journey. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you. Because I will say this just this morning. You know, things just change from one moment to the next. And sometimes, like I said, it's up here and down here. But yesterday, the one thing that we've been trying to get through is these kids needed to get weaned off of oxygen. They've been on ventilators. They've been on a CPAP machine back and forth. And it seems like they would be off for a little while and then they'd have to put them back on. But, you know, I had peace in the whole thing. And I'm, 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 when I say that, I mean that. I had peace starting 18 months ago when God said, you've got to line your words up. Because if you're going to trust me, you've got to trust me completely. And so basically this morning we were talking about prayer requests and I will tell you this, what I got this morning was Cooper for the first 24 hours since he's been born, he didn't need any help with his oxygen. He's breathing on his own. And I heard that this morning and literally when we began to pray, not even a few minutes after that, then I got another message from my son that said, not only that, but they took his feeding tube out. Praise God. And, and that's just, we're still in the journey. <laughs> we're still in the journey. But thank you, God, that you perfected that journey. You've seen it from the beginning to the end already, and you have a plan. You know, when I was thinking about, when I was thinking about praise and worship, I was trying to think, God, I just, really, there's nothing else that I can say is that I just want to be in your presence, God. Because I know that's where things change. So I don't want to go forward quickly. I want to stay in his presence. Even when it's a tough spot, there is when things change. Caught up in your presence. And I just want to sit at your feet here this morning, God, that you are a miracle working God. You are a promise keeper. And you're the way maker. Even when we walk through some darkness, God, that you are the light that I'm always running towards. We thank you for blessing. And we thank you for consistency. And I simply just thank you for your presence here in this place this morning. presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment and I never want to leave oh I'm not here for blessing Jesus you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motion and I'm sorry 
when I just sing another song take me back to where we started I've opened up my heart to you and I'm sorry Lord when I've come with my agenda I'm sorry when I forget that you're enough take me back to where we've started open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet caught up in this holy never want to leave I'm not here for blessing Jesus you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do I just want want you and nothing else Lord nothing else nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do oh I just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do Lord I just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do oh I just want you Nothing else and nothing else, nothing else will do. Oh, I just want you, Lord, and nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do. Just want to sit here at your 
that we have. Help us to want a fellowship with you more than anything else. Enrich our lives as we draw closer to you. That we can exhibit your love to those that we come in contact with. In your name we ask it, Amen. Have you ever read that scripture and talked about people bound up with chains of iron? How many of you, of you have known people that seem to be bound up with chains and they can't get loose? There's something in their life that takes over and dominates and they just can't seem to get past that. I had a brother-in-law, for lack of a better definition he was a bad evil man he mistreated people from the time he was an adolescent went to prison a couple of times he worked with the drug dealers he wasn't a drug dealer he was their enforcer he was a really bad guy he developed a heroin addiction fifteen hundred dollars a day worth of heroin well that ended him up in a treatment center and he also, he, one of the things that he um, excelled in was being with the biker community, outlaw bikers. And he was in this treatment center one day, and this guy with a, looked like a biker vest coming down and talking to guys. And Calvin goes, well, man, I can relate with this guy. Well, he turned around, and he had a cross on the back of his jacket, on the back of his vest. And, cross, and Calvin's like, man, I don't want nothing to do with this guy. But he kept being drawn to this guy every time that he would come in there. Now, Calvin had mistreated his family, his aunts and uncles, his sister, his mother, that nobody would have anything to do with him except Janice. He would come by and see us every few years, um, and Janice prayed for him for years and years and years. And he had chains it was just like chains on him. Well, that guy that he didn't want to have anything to do with invested into Calvin's life. Calvin got saved. God delivered him of that addiction just like that. And it was like you got a new kid. <laughs> he had spent his whole life trying to mistreat people and now he wanted to spend his life investing into people because he had this Jesus in him 
and he was just like a little kid you couldn't get in him enough. It was so cool to be around him, and he went 90 miles an hour from the time he got saved. And I kept telling him, I said, Calvin, you need to slow down a little bit, you know. You burn the candle at both ends and in the middle. And the words out of his mouth was, I don't have much time. I need to. Now, God told him something that he didn't tell the rest of us because Calvin didn't live too many years after he got saved. But he invested in so many lives, young people's lives in, in the biker community and so on. One guy that had met him one time, one time, found out that Calvin had passed away and they were having his funeral. He drove 800 miles to come to his funeral because Calvin had made such an impact in his life telling him about Jesus. The experience never did dim, the salvation experience never did dim in his life. It was new every day. He got up every day thinking, how can I share Jesus with the people I come in contact with? The Bible tells me that it, it's renewed every morning. How many of us live with that expectation? The world looks at us and they say Christianity is a religion. Christianity is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. It's far more than a religion. In a religion, you work your way to God. In Christianity, God comes and lives in you. We are such a powerful part of society, but yet the we, we don't make a third of the impact that we could. Keep that newness alive. God can break those chains off. I remember Calvin, he was so upset one day. He's, I said, well, why are you upset? He said, well, God delivered me all these drugs, but he didn't deliver me a smoking. I said, well, maybe he left you something to work on. <laughs> you know? God gives us opportunities each and every day. Make the most of them. Usher, if you'd come forward, we'll take up our tithes and offerings. People a lot of times don't think of this as, a, as an act of worship, but it is. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you for the opportunity to bless this ministry. We thank you for the opportunity to spread your gospel. Lord, help this money go forth that we can spread your gospel, that people can experience that newness of life, dear Heavenly Father. That excitement that you get whenever you get set free Bless these dollars and cents. In your name we ask it. Amen. So while we are uh, receiving the offering this morning, we've had several prayer requests that came in late yesterday evening, last night, and some this morning. So I'm going to share those with you. And what a powerful presence that is here in this holy presence with us this morning. And so while we're in this atmosphere, worship team's just getting ready to lead us in this course about him being the way maker. How many of y'all know he is the way maker? That's who he is. And so, so here's what I want to encourage you to do. Uh, Alan uh, Kettner is watching us on live stream this morning and, and then sent in a prayer request going through a huge battle. There may be others that are watching on live stream. We will pray for you as well. You may be here this morning and you have need of prayer. We're going to ask you, listen, you got something going on? You raise your hand, we're going to be praying for you. And if you would like, you just reach over and whisper to your neighbor and say, listen, I'm struggling here. We're sick there. We just got this report. I don't know what you're dealing with. I just know the God who's got us covered. Amen. And, and so 
we, we're going to trust him in these things. And so I'm going to read through this re, this request list for you. Uh, they asked specifically if we would pray. And there's something, you know, when you're going through a hard time, it, there's something powerful about just knowing that you've got people that are holding exactly. you up. Yes. Just holding you up. And that's what we're going to do. Listen, this world, we live in a hostile environment. It is a disease-infested, enemy-obtained, but this is the Lord's land. This is the land of promise. He's our promised land, amen. And so we're going to live in that right there. And so so you listen to these, and then we're going to be praying for these. So um, the update from Alan uh, is that his kidneys are not improving. But how many all know God is greater than, amen? See, the way maker for Bev's twin babies, uh, these grandbabies. Woo! What a, when we prayed in early service, just like we're praying now, they were included in their prayer. And by the time early service is over, we get an updated report and God has taken them off of all. God's good, gang. Listen, Amen. he loves his kids now. He does. He loves you. He loves you. He's for you. And you're going to, listen, nobody gets a free pass. We're not saying that. It's not pie in the sky and the sweet by and by and all the steak on the plate while we wait kind of a thing. You're going to battle. That's what we've been learning about is how to fight a good fight. Fighting the good fight, the spiritual warfare. And so that's what we're going to do. And part of that is coming around as an army to support those that we're in this battle with. So his kidneys are not improving, but they're getting ready to. Amen. And so they've taken fluid off uh, yesterday. Uh, they got to continue to repeat the dialysis, uh, looking at trying to get him off the vent. How many all know what he's done for one? Dave just shared testimony about his brother-in-law. Calvin sat in this church. I've, I've preached to Calvin. I watched the fruit of that and what he's telling you. He took, he took a big old bear and made him into a gentle giant is what he did. That's who God is. From Jeanette Bingham, I need prayer. I've got a, a kidney infection to the point they've had to put in a drain tube. If there's no improvement, the possibility exists that I will lose my kidney. I've got to uh, uh, go to rehab and I'm extremely weak. Would you please have the church family pray for me? Um, I don't know if Jeanette's watching. Esme and, 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 and Alan were praying. One that came in this morning. This is from Miss Fern, from Pastor Fern. Pastor Josh Haney and his wife, Gina, uh, Pleasant Hope Church. It's a little church just south of Kabul. Okay. Uh, they took their uh, little daughter, and she's like, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, somewhere in that age group. I'm not exactly sure. She's young. Listen to this. They took her to the hospital. She's transported to St. Louis. Her blood sugar this morning was 700. Oh my. 700. We're praying for a little girl. See, if that's your little girl, how many of y'all want somebody praying for you? See, I'm, we need one another. And so we're just going to... Before we sing about the way maker, we're going to entrust him to make a way, and then we're going to praise him in song for making a way. Amen. Um, they're going to keep us posted on that one. So those three that have come in, there may be others. For those of you that are watching, if you're there at home with someone or at work with someone, just get that person to, to stand with you. If there's no one there, this church is standing with you. If you're here in the congregation right now and you say, listen, boy, I've got a need too. I got some stuff. It's just been, it's been, I got a tough report. It's been a crushing schedule. Some big it happened back there. How many of y'all know there are those it's? And when it happened, it changed everything. It was devastating. It was, and I'm not over it yet. So some of those it's are in the past. Some of you have that big it that's right now, just like some of these are your it. It's current, it's real, it's right now. Maybe it held over from the past and it still is. It, it still is. Or maybe you've got a date with an it tomorrow or a week. It's on the calendar and you've got to face it. It. You know what it is. If that's you, you slide your hand up. I want you to wave at me. Wave at me. Okay, come on. Anybody else here in the congregation? Okay, everybody look around. And if you got somebody standing by you, near you, in front of you, beside you, hold your hands up now. I want you to go and pray with them. Let's just take a moment. Just timing out right here. We're just timing out. This is this prayer segment right here. You strike while the iron's hot. Make hay while hay, huh? While the sun's shining. Let's pray 
while God's raining it down. So you find you somebody and you go pray with them. If they got their hand up, everybody put your hand back up again. You're here in sanctuary and you need somebody to come and pray with you. And, and you don't have to talk a lot of that if you're not in, if you're not comfortable with that. Listen, you do not, you do not have to go through it by yourself. And the key is you're going to go through and we'll help you. We'll walk it with you. If I can fix it, but I'm not the way maker, he is. And they're going to start singing this way maker. They're going to sing and lead it. And let's just praise him and worship him in the middle of the battle. And just like the children of Israel, when Judah went out and they went in front of the army and said, send the praisers out, we're going to praise him in the battle. We're going to praise him in the storm. And he's going to make a way for us because that's who he is. Lord God, we lift these up. We're praying for Alan. We're praying for Jeanette. We're praying for this little girl's blood sugar. Come down in the name of Jesus. We speak to it. There's no distance in your spirit. There's no distance in your word. We speak to it in the name of Jesus Christ. We call it healed. We call it whole. We call it delivered. We call it set free. In Jesus' name, we pray over these that are watching other requests, Lord God. Father God, I don't know what they are, but you know. Light in the dark. Father, for these that have their hands up here in the sanctuary today. Waymaker, this is who you are. Waymaker. You're a waymaker, a promise keeper. Miracle worker, promise keeper. You're the light in this dark place, in this dark spot. You're greater than my end. The end of the past, the end of today, and the end of tomorrow. You're bigger than you're greater.
is to speak these words to you. For some of you, you haven't seen it for a long time. You've stood and you've stood and you've stood. I want you to tell you, he's been working. Look over at your neighbor and encourage him to tell him, he's still working. He's still working. Mm -hmm. He hasn't forgotten. Victory. Victory is close. Victory is close. You're about to see it. I don't know who that's for or how many that's for. But when that victory appears here in the... And I'm not putting it inside a time frame. I'm just saying close. For me, close is a a week or a month, somewhere along in there. I'm kind of an impatient guy. For God, close is like, all right, you're close to having a kid, Abraham. That'll be 25 years from now. That ain't my close. So when God's saying that to me, I'm about it's close. I'm thinking, okay, a week's a pretty good wait. A month is like killing me, God. So it's... Uh, so when you get that victory, you remember this word this morning, or if you're watching this morning, and that victory comes, would you give us a victory report? Would you make sure that the girls in the office get a report on that so that we can just share it? How many of y'all know we need to not just share the prayer requests and the needs, but we need to share the victory report so people are encouraged in that? Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. God bless you. We love you. Scripture real quick. Yeah, yeah. It's Daniel 10, Marsh. Verse, mm. verse 12. Come on up. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to be humble and humble yourself before yeah. your God. Your words were heard. Yeah. Your words were heard. Your, yeah. And I have Ooh. come in response to them. Mm, 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 mm. What a word. Thank you, Jesus. Good word. Good word. Good word. Ooh, I think God's got some good cooking on the stove for us today, man. This is some good stuff. So thank you, Jesus.